This is Neha Singh. And Derek Polano. And uh, we're going to get started shortly. We're just going to wait for about two minutes and get started. So uh, welcome, everybody. Thank you very much for taking the time to attend our webinar today. Um, the webinar is really for anybody looking to understand a little bit more about our productivity leader training, deciding whether you want to attend, or if you're already attending. At the end of the webinar, we'll be going over a checklist that's really going to help you um, design your little project. So it's we the feedback that we have gotten, we're a continuous improvement consulting firm. So the feedback we've gotten from our previous training sessions is people are not sure the type of project that they need to work on for an improvement project. So this session is designed to help you learn about the training and then help you, um, we'll give you a checklist towards the end of it to download the improvement project selection. Is there anything you wanna add, Derek? No, I think uh, you've covered it off. Let's get started. Awesome. So um, uh, our initial slide says timeline is now pace. And the reason it says that is because we used to be called Timeline Consulting. And five years later, we have since rebranded and we are now PACE, which is Partners in Achieving Change Excellence. That's our new branding. So if you can, in your chat window, I'm just going to get you to start using the chat window. Um, tell us what you're hoping to get out of today's session. That would be helpful. So we want to make sure we cover everything. We have a webinar, but we can absolutely cover anything that you were hoping to get out of today's session. I hope everybody knows where the chat window is. Okay, so there's some ideas coming up. So ideas on process, um, how to get ready for the training. That's a good one. Improved revenue. I like that one. Mm -hmm. We'll definitely talk about that. Um, so yeah, we'll definitely cover off what you were hoping to get out of, of today's session for sure. So here's our team. Just to give you, this is our core team. It's not our extended team. Um, and um, it's basically, we have a team of really, really qualified people and we're really great to have everybody on board as well. So uh, we'll go into detail in terms of the trainers uh, and the senior consultants. So myself, Dennis, Norm, and Derek are the senior consultants that are responsible for the lean aspect of things. And we'll go into our profiles a little bit later. So where are we located? We're located in Sudbury is our head office. We have an office in North Bay, we have office in Timmins, and we pretty much service um, anywhere you want us to be is where we are <laughs> located. Uh, the little dots on the map basically indicate where we're currently servicing clients. And um, yeah. And the awards and recognitions that we've uh, received so far, independent awards, not, 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 no awards we gave ourselves, but other people. Oh, Carol says she can't hear anything right now. Can everybody else hear me? I'm just gonna keep talking. It might be an internet connection thing, Carol, so um, send me another text if you can't hear anything. Okay, because Kim can hear me. All right, I'm going to continue talking. And then send me a text or on the chat window if you can. Okay, TPS can hear me. We have a few. So, Carol, it might be an internet connection thing at your end. Sorry about that. Um, so we've received the, we've, we've helped our clients um, receive the Leading Best Practice Award. We've been featured on CBC Radio. Uh, we've had several com conference presentations. We had independent media recognitions. The blue um, circles really are the facts that these are things we haven't achieved yet, but you have to have a vision. So um, our vision is to write a book on productivity in human services. And when we are writing that book for productivity in human services, we're hoping to win the Shingle Prize because the Shingle Prize is given out in different categories. 
And in the book category, it's for creating a domain of knowledge that doesn't currently exist. And um, the productivity improvements or lean and uh, quality improvement in human services is, is a very untapped field. There's a lot of information about lean in hospitals, but not specifically in general in the human services area. So we're hoping to win that award. Um, and here's the Canada Health InfoWay Award. You can read up on it by going to the website. Uh, you can listen to our, uh, our, our radio cast with uh, Marcus Schwab. It was very early in the morning when, when I had the conversation. It was exactly a year ago, actually. Mm -hmm. And um, the, you can look at the full article from the Sudbury Star on... Um, uh, actually, Roxanne is going to be... Um, doing a case study webinar. So what I'm going to do for you guys actually is just show you the offer to register for the case study webinar. It's a it's a free webinar, and um, you can try if you want to if you click on that register now button, you can easily register for that case study webinar. We'll show it again a little bit later, but uh, definitely if you want to register for that one, it's coming up. When is it coming up? Like next week, next Tuesday. Okay, so it's exactly a week from now. So two weeks from now, and uh, Roxanne is going to give her view of how she, what her experience was as a student and how she applied the improvement in her workplace. All right, so the other one is we, we were recognized at the North Bay Nugget for Atlas Copco. They made over $500,000 in savings. So bigger the organization, the bigger the savings. So $500,000 is on the low end, because if you see Ed over here, second from the left, um, second from the right, he actually didn't give us the number of how much dollars, how many dollars he saved. And um, we do use Lego Serious Play, and it sounds a bit kooky when we say it to people. We sound a little kooky, but it's actually a very, very good tool. And um, Dick DiStefano from SAMHSA actually uh, came in to do our, uh, participated in our rebranding session using Lego, and he wrote an article on it. So if you want to check out more about that, you feel free to go ahead and check that out. So, I'm now going to um, sh show you a poll in terms of just to understand what your current level of experience with Lean is. So, quality improvement initiatives, Lean. Feel free to just participate in the poll, and everybody can see the results of the poll. So it looks like uh, there's quite a few just starting to learn lean and, uh, oh, quite a few. So 75% of you, 80% of you <laughs> are novice. It's like, it's kind of cool to be able to see, see the uh, buyers move. Okay? It's interesting. Okay, so we have 83% just starting to learn. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to do a couple of slides on what lean is about. And 17% uh, of you are immediate that has Im have implemented some projects. I'm gonna end that poll right now. So, like I, I thought, I think I read your mind. Um, you're probably curious what lean is. You can't go through, this is not a what is lean presentation, but we can definitely give you a little bit of an idea of what you're getting into. It's really an approach to systematically eliminating waste in anything that you do. So when you, when you look at, there's st six steps in a process, right? Um, a lot of efficiency consultants would probably try to measure the little time pieces in, in these, in, and who's doing these steps, and then try to time you down and say, oh, how can you do, you know, how can you do the same thing in less amount of time? And that is not what we do. So we, we do something much smarter than that. We actually show you how to completely eliminate steps in the process. We focus on things that simply don't add value to the customer. So we change the conversation. Instead of looking at what you're currently doing, we look at why you're doing what you're doing and how we can actually at elim eliminate non-value added things that your customer is simply not willing to pay for. 
So, you know, things like payroll is very important. Customers not willing to pay for it, so you still need to do it. That's necessary. But there are certain things that you just do that doesn't add value to anybody. So when you have to redo work, recheck work, you know, have all these mistakes in your processes, that takes up time and money. So we teach you how to actually eliminate waste, and um, those are certain steps that you don't need to be doing. And at the end of the day, you can do more with the same amount of resources. So previously, you had um, you know, the same set of customers being serviced by these many people. You've now doubled your capacity to do your existing process will actually be done faster with less amount of resources, and you can take on more value-added work. So if um, you know, there's a lot of value added things that you can do to please your customers. Oh, Al says he's unable to hear anything right now. Can everybody else hear me okay? It might be an internet connection, but Al is a good point because um, we might actually, from a continuous improvement perspective, we might actually have a phone number in place in the future. And there is a live replay after could you send a note back to Al? So there is a live replay after, so we, you won't be missing out on any of this information. So at the end of the day, long story short, Lean is about doing more with the same. That's basically what it's about. Um, so our agenda for the day basically is going to be in three parts. We're going to start with the why because that's always the money question. Why sh are you interested in the training? I'm going to ask you that. Uh, why should you be interested in the training? Why are training stands apart from the rest? And uh, then get into the what. So uh, Derek will talk about the what in, in terms of the productivity leader training, what others have achieved, do um, why do you, what do you need to know prior to the training? And then we'll get into the how. So a lot of you people want to understand about the process. We'll explain to you the what and the how in the process. But we even have a little uh, business case letter. I don't know if it's an offer or not to help you convince your team as well. So why don't I'm going to display a poll right now. Why don't you guys tell me why are you interested in the training? I'm going to start the poll. All right, so we're seeing results come in. So 14% of you want to do it for professional development, 71% of you want to improve productivity, and 14% of you want the competitive edge. That's fantastic. Sustainability would have been a valid answer as well. <laughs> I, should, I should have put a little, you know, um, fly in the ointment to put it invalid in. But those are those are all great reasons to to take the training. Um, so I'm gonna end that poll. Okay. So the return on investment, because a lot of you want to improve productivity. We you know when you send someone to a professional development course Typically, what I hear from most people is they go to professional development, they remember three things and they come back and you are lucky if they will actually transfer knowledge onto you and say, oh, you know what, this is what I learned. Or if you're really lucky if they actually apply in the workplace. So our training is very much focused on getting you the most return on investment and we measure our success by how, how not just, um, we don't measure our success by how much how many dollars we make, we measure our success by what is the return on investment for our services in general? So in the human services sector, we have a five times return on investment for the training specifically. So if you come to the training session, you go back to your workplace, the first project that you complete, 
you are likely going to save upwards of $25,000. Actually, not twenty five; it's $12,500, right? That's the five times return on investment. Yeah, and I, I, would, I would say that's on the low side. That's on I, the, yeah. I don't think we've had a project that saved any less than that. So. We've had a $10,000 project, oh, okay. actually, yeah. So that yeah, averages it out. Point. Yeah, yeah, yeah we, did, we did have a $10,000 project. That's, that's what keeps that number low. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, on the mining manufacturing industrial side, it's a 20 times return on investment. And of course, the return on investment is much higher on, on that side because um, it's directly proportional to the size of your organization and operations, actually. So um, there's, there's a significant return on your investment for productivity training. And the other reason you really want to take the training is because of uh, changing employee demographics. I'll get into um, a little bit of detail around that. Maintaining the competitive edge in terms of the current levels of service that you have and you want to keep delivering more with less every day. That's what we aim to do here is uh, we're, we're getting some new technology pieces that will actually reduce the cost of our consulting. So we, we pride ourselves in doing that, maintaining our competitive edge. And uh, innovation, adaptability and sustainability. So whenever we talk about, a lot of people talk about efficiency. They, when they see us, they think about efficiency and they think that efficiency is the, um, is the opposite of innovation. But we will show you how efficiency actually promotes innovation at the end of the day. So the changing demographics piece, uh, this is a slide from Canadian Business. And you can see that uh, in the last uh, 15 years, your millennials are growing. You have 35% of your population are millennials and um, the boomers and Gen X's are tied together. So a millennial is aged 15 to 35. That's the definition of a millennial. And um, you know, they're motivated differently. So um, some of us old folks might have been motivated, not, not old folks, because you know, if you're over a millennial, you're not old, eh, Derek? You're, yeah. only, you're only in your <laughs> yeah. you're only in your forties. Um, have a certain sense of um, uh, the, it has uh, they have a certain sense of in terms of loyalty to the organization. Mm -hmm. They have a certain sense of you know wanting to uh, wanting to really um, stick with a particular organization, putting the organization before themselves. The millennials, there's a lot of uh, chatter going around, are harder to manage. They're motivated differently. They're motivated by their own intrinsic um, value system where they really want, they care about the quality of life above other things. So there's a lot of, and they want to be more engaged. They want to be more involved. They expect it. This is an expectation. And so how the training actually helps with this is, um, it actually, well, I'll get into how the training helps with that, but that's, it really does engage the millennials because respect for people is a cornerstone of what we're talking about here. So the true cost of, um, so because a lot of you might say, eh, I can just let them go. You know, if I hire a millennial and they're no good, because we can't paint them with the same paintbrush, but if you hire someone, they're no good, we could just let them go. Absolutely you could, but what is the cost of letting them go? So this was a study conducted by fastcompany.com and 41% of a company surveyed said that a bad hire cost them at least $25,000 and um, a, um, uh, and some certain other 25% com of companies said that a bad hire cost them $50,000. So that's huge, right? That's, that's about, what is that number there? 66% of companies telling you that a bad hire has cost them an average of $35,000. So you really want to design your culture and change your culture to adapt to the new demographic if you possibly can at all. So how our curriculum helps is it teaches us how to sustainably engage your workforce. This is not a patch, it's a fix. So it really helps you um, understand on an ongoing basis when problems are happening, when things are changing, how can you sustainably engage people to adapt and respond to the problems on an ongoing basis? 
We embed the principle of respect for the people in your culture. It's, you know, respect for the people is a cornerstone of the, of the lean philosophy. And, you know, absolutely you respect each other. This is a, this is, this takes it to a different level where you actually respect people's ideas and creativities. And that takes me to the next point where there's an actual waste called eliminate the waste of not utilizing employees ideas. So there's, there's a whole bunch because a person closest to the work knows most about what could be improved in regards to the work. So really it's about engaging those, those, uh, those people that can tell you how the work can be improved the best. And uh, maintaining your competitive edge. I just put the Atlas Copco picture up there because man, they're, they're pretty fantastic operation already. So why would they go out and seek, continuous improvement, productivity training? And the answer is because you, you can always be better. And this was a, when we came in and we did this, uh, you know, continuous improvement is part of their uh, core principles and core values. And when we helped them along with the training, part of the reason they really were able to flourish so well is because they had that culture already of continuous improvement. We were just able to reinforce some of those principles and help them along. And really, excellence is the new normal. You know, um, a lot of organizations, there's a competitor popping up every single day. So you really have to be ex excellent. So if you're in the not-for-profit sector, right, You, you uh, what speaks to you is um, increasing patient contact time, right? So uh, prep time that's not patient contact time can be decreased. There's one example here from Northeast Specialized Geriatric Services. This is Melanie uh, Melanie and Shane did the project together and they decreased this, the prep time by 50% per follow-up visit. And uh, there was about $16,000 that they were able to reinvest back into the healthcare system. So they freed up that much time to really be able to service more clients and to just do more with less. Here's just an example of a tool um, that they use this is called a value stream mapping tool that we taught them and this is actually their work that they did very colorful but it means something um and last but not the least the innovation adaptability and efficiency if you realize efficiencies you could really free up time to innovate we are not the consulting firm that's going to come in and advise you to get rid of staff or cut that many jobs or whatever because that is just for lack of a better word, moronic. Why would you let go of all anyone that has that much knowledge and history and background about your organization? What you ideally want to do is when you are freeing up resources, you're actually looking to for them to do more value added work. How can they service more clients in a more sustainable manner? Right? Yeah, it's possible that as um, as people you know leave certain positions, you may not end up filling that position. That's just natural attrition. And if you think back to that demographic chart, this is the right time to work on that attrition. But really, it's about freeing up time to innovate, and then getting into a, a creating a culture of continuous improvement, innovation, and sustainability. You you have the only way to really get the benefit of the training is if in your organization, well, the, not the only way, the best way, because the, the, the only way is come to our training, you go back to your workplace, you'll make, you'll make a project-based improvement and that'll be fine. But if you want it in an organization level, um, you, need, you need to uh, really look at it as a cultural change versus a point in time improvement. So what's, are you on this one now? Yeah. Okay, so what's unique about our training with Pace? I'm gonna stop uh, bothering you and I'm gonna pass it over to Derek Polano. All right, thank you, Neha. Okay, so uh, I'm gonna tell you a little bit about why our training is different. And for those of you who have been in the workforce for a long time, you've probably gone through a lot of different types of training. Um, a lot of it is probably very similar and especially for those of you who have done any lean training, one of the things that you'll notice um, with most lean trainers is that they really focus around tools. They provide a lot of tools. Here's how you do this. Here's how you find savings here. Here's how you can increase efficiency here. Um, and that's usually where their training ends. Where our training is different, 
or one of the ways that our training is different is we take it a step beyond just the lean tools. We actually take it two steps beyond the lean mm -hmm. tools because we combine lean and the lean methodology with project management and good project management principles and also change management principles, which really are about helping you make a change within your organization and make that change last. And really the way we bring you through our learning is in a very structured manner. So we've actually created phases that we take you through in terms of the training. And each of those phases applies to a different step in your improvement project that you're working on while you're taking the training with us. So it's a very unique approach. And uh, we believe and, and have the, uh, have the student uh, case studies to prove that it's a very effective way to go through lean training. The other thing is we bring forth a lot of hands-on activities. So our training is not about sitting in seats and listening to us talk. Our training is about interaction, it's about getting involved, and it's about hands-on learning. So we use a number of different methods to do this, um, some different tools and games. The other thing, as, as Neha mentioned earlier, is we've incorporated something called Lego Serious Play into our training. Um, this is a very unique methodology, and uh, we are the only ones currently using um, this methodology within lean training environments. So uh, it's something very unique about our training, and it really helps hit home the principles and make you, again, as Neha said, be able to take something tangible back to your workplace. So I'm going to show you a couple quick uh, student testimonials now. Um, just some of the students that have gone through our training and what they think about that training. Okay, so we're just loading up a video. This is uh, Dan Draper. He is the Dean of Health Sciences at Cambrian College. And we'll play a next video as well. I'm going to play a video from, from Bruce at Pioneer Manor. That's a long-term care home in Sudbury. All right, and uh, we'll play one more video from Tina McDonald. It's a 11 second video. Okay, so uh, those are a couple examples of some of our students and uh, how they felt about the training that they took. So as you can see, um, we do have a very good track record with our students and, uh, and the experience they have with our training. So one of the other things that, uh, that I want to just hit home is that, again, uh, very hands-on training, very much um, getting our students involved. So you'll see here on the, uh, the left-hand side, um, we've got a number of students from the uh, from the healthcare and community service sector um, getting very involved, working on. Uh, I believe there's some uh, fish bones they're working on in the left side. Uh, over on the right hand side is um, people working with the Cochrane District Social Services Administration Board, and they are uh, um, every day we go through and make sure that we've hit the concepts home with our students. And so this is them getting involved, actually showing that they've learned. Uh, what we've taught them. 
So I'm just going to talk a little bit about our trainers. Um, we always have a multitude of trainers at every one of our um, productivity leader sessions. So at minimum, uh, if you come to our training, you will be exposed to at least three different trainers, sometimes more, um, throughout your session. We like to mix it up and give you a different perspective from different people, and it helps you not get bored with our training. But our trainers um, are really world-class educators, and collectively, we've trained over a thousand students in uh, a lean and continuous improvement methodology, um, as well as coaching over a hundred uh, projects to, through to completion. So um, some of the trainers, both Neha and myself are trainers. Uh, we also have Dennis Parisi, who is a, a master black belt uh, with a ton of coaching and, and teaching experience. And our, uh, our senior master black belt, Norm Rudd, um, who joins us on uh, a couple different courses and is leading up our critical to vision uh, training methodology. And I just wanted to add part of a requirement uh, for being a trainer. You can't be 100% of the time you can't be a trainer. You have to do 20% consulting minimum for you to be an, a trainer with pace because it, we, our training is so hands-on and the coaching is we're not just trainers, we're coaches, right? So it's really hard for um, us to properly coach our students if we're not consulting ourselves. So there's no one that's just teaching and not doing. Every one of us is doing and teaching. Yeah, that's a great point, Neha. So uh, one new addition is we've actually now integrated some new technology into our training. Uh, this is uh, starting up uh, shortly, and this is just one more way that we're really trying to stay on the cutting edge of how we deliver our training, how we provide interactivity in our training, and get our students involved. So those of you that are taking our training uh, coming up next week and beyond, you will be exposed to some, some really new innovative technology that we'll be using. So make sure to bring a laptop or a smartphone with you if you have that. If not, we can, we can help you out with that. Another thing that uh, is unique about our training is our access to an online community. So we use a platform where all our students can come together, share knowledge, um, pass on information to each other and help coach each other. So this is really like the, uh, the Facebook for business. And this is a place where all of our users, all of our, our, our uh, students that have gone through our training or are going through our training can collaborate and discuss and, and get input from each other and from our coaches. So this is something that's now being heavily integrated into our training as well. Okay, so we're just gonna show another uh, quick video here um, on how we use uh, Lego in our lean training. Oh, I think I queued up the wrong video. One second. It's a pretty fun, uh, fun little video, and if you saw the the before, there's a lot more problems going on. You guys will get to experience that and uh, see what that's all about when you take our training. Oh, so I just got to flip back to the presentation. Okay, so uh, just gonna, as we always do, get your input as we go along. So I uh, just want to take a quick poll from what I've shown you so far. What do you feel is the uh, part of the training you are most interested in in participating in? What is and we'll get you. There we go. I know there are quite a few options there. If you only had to pick one, which one it would be? <laughs> There's a reason we do this, and it's not just because we uh, like to get you involved, but it, it helps us understand what the pieces are and really helps us improve, uh, sorry, it helps us understand what pieces people are most looking forward to, get input from you on the fly so that we can actually incorporate it into what we do and into our improvement in our, in our training. I'm All excited right. that someone else is excited about the interactive technology. <laughs> That's good. All of it. I like that all of it is, uh, is, is the is top answer. Off. That's, that's yeah. great to see. Fantastic. 
and just go. Okay, so I'm gonna give you a little bit of an overview of what to expect for those of you that are taking the training or that are considering the training. So um, first of all, when you come into our training, uh, you're gonna come in for three days initially. And during those three days, we're gonna teach you some tools because there are a lot of tools to learn in Lean. Um, but we're also gonna expose you to a lot of change management principles. The goal of those three days is really to get everybody on track with their projects have a project charter or a problem statement, and really have a clear definition of what problem they're gonna move forward with uh, for their project and apply the training and the tools that they've learned uh, to that project within their own workplaces. So after those three days, people are gonna go back to their workplace and we give them a break for uh, a couple months um, with some coaching. So we send people back to their workplace and they start working on their project within their own workplace. Um, during that time, we have three one-hour group teleconferences. We also do uh, touch bases on uh, Yammer, which is the platform that I showed you earlier, with our coaches and with the other uh, members of your, of your uh, training session. So this is really where you're going through and you're working on your projects with our help uh, in your own workplace. So that's where you get exposed to actually using the tools. After that, you come back for two final days of training. And really what the training is at that point is to help you again more with change management, instituting or implementing changes within your workplace, uh, understanding how to sustain the gains that you've made with those changes and put in sustainability and continuous improvement plans. So that's the last two days of the training. Um, post the last two days of training, uh, we follow up with you to make sure that your projects get executed to completion. You've achieved the gains that you're hoping to achieve and uh, have implemented all the sustainability tools that you need to to make sure those changes are, are, are kept in place for the long term. After that, you will achieve your uh, green belt certificate. So that's the path forward for the trainees. All right. So really, what is it all about? Well, we provide you with the ability to actively lead projects. So this is one project you're gonna take on um, with the training that you're doing and, and you're working through that project while you're taking that training. You're gonna get the hands-on experience of implementing lean principles to a project uh, using our methodology. It's gonna help you understand waste and be able to recognize, categorize, and eliminate waste within your workplace. It's gonna give you a practical knowledge of the application of lean principles and tools, and you're actually gonna apply that within your workplace on a project. You're gonna complete that project showing demonstrated time savings, cost savings, and or an increase in quality to your customer. And at the end of the day, it's really about uh, getting that project completed, getting your certified lean practitioner or certified productivity leader certificate. So that's really what the training is all about. And we're gonna start one more poll for you. Take a look and uh, please provide some feedback for us. As we're in the midst of uh, renaming our brand, we're also taking a look at, at all our training and, and the branding of all of that along with our certificate. So we're always looking for input on what people think uh, about our uh, certificate names, training names, et cetera. Okay, so it looks like a productivity leader, certified practitioner is getting the, uh, the majority of the vote. So we appreciate that feedback. I, I like the neither and don't care in there. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's good. They didn't, the, they didn't get any votes, though. <laughs> yeah, I know. I left it in there just to see <laughs> if anybody would say awesome. anything. Oh, that's good. Okay. So we'll jump back into the presentation. And uh, so this next part, I'm going to go over at a fairly high level. We're going to talk about uh, a few of the projects that we've coached through and what people have achieved on those projects. Um, so I'm just going to touch, touch on it at a high level because we have an entire webinar coming up where we go into more detail on case studies. So the first one, actually, Neha already went through. This is Melanie and Shane. And uh, looking at the follow-up clinic, they were able to reduce time um, in setting up the clinic and achieve some really significant results, ultimately um, allowing people to spend more time with their practitioner, which was really what the, what the goal of their clientele was. 
Okay, the next one, uh, Dana worked in, uh, in um, the Sioux, uh, part of Sioux Area Hospital, and she was looking at uh, eliminating wait times to get into rehab within her community. Prior, uh, everybody had, prior to her doing her pilot program, everybody had to uh, end up in the hospital for them to actually get into uh, a bedded rehab. And with her project, she was a lot. Uh, she she enabled people to access rehab without having to go into the hospital, and that really reduced uh, hospital stays. And for ALC patients, had a dramatic improvement, and uh, ultimately saved a, a lot of money and a lot more to be saved in the future. Uh, Bruce, one of our students, uh, worked at Pioneer Manor, a long-term care home. Um, he took on a project of uh, trying to fill shifts when people called in sick. This was a real problem they were facing in their organization. And uh, with the help of our training and our coaching, uh, he really made a significant impact to uh, how they were able to replace those shifts, fill those shifts, and make sure that they had a full workforce um, to really mitigate the risk to clients and provide better service to their clients. Gail and Josanne um, also worked in healthcare at St. Joe's Community Care Center, and they really looked at turning around, uh, turning around beds. So when people are discharged, how quickly can they get another patient into that bed, providing the service that they need to provide? And they were able to make some substantial gains, 50% uh, reduction in, in time it took to fill a bed after uh, one became available. And Roxanne Zook, who was our uh, the recipient of our, our community award. Um, Roxanne uh, was a, is a program supervisor at uh, Monarch Recovery Services and she actually used our uh, methodology and our help coaching to actually uh, get rid of a wait list for a, uh, a, pr a pregnancy program, a parenting program, uh, whereas before there was a significant wait list and, and people were actually missing their window of opportunity um, to get into that program. So that was a, a huge success that Roxanne made. So um, as you can see, we've got an offer up on the side for our uh, next webinar that's coming up in a couple of weeks. And um, Roxanne will actually be joining us to talk more about her experience. Oh, and the last one is uh, Chantal and Tina. Um, they were able to use our methodology to extend the hours um, for access within the CMHA and this actually opened up the door to uh, a number of new clients that were not uh, getting access into the programs prior to uh, uh, to them them taking on this project so this was a, a significant improvement and uh, really allowed more access to the uh, to the training that there is to the services that CMHA had all right so um, Again, if you want more information on those, our next webinar will go into a lot more detail on that. So I'm going to hand it back to Neha now. She's going to talk a little bit more about what you need prior to coming into our training. Okay, so basically um, what we promised you, the checklist at the end of the webinar. So we're just going to display that checklist for you shortly as an offer. You can download the checklist. Yes, with the underscore for that. We're just going to display the offer to, for you to download the checklist. There we go. And I will I will now walk through the checklist with you. So let me just find it. Project selection checklist. So hopefully everybody can see my Microsoft Word screen. Awesome. So basically, this is this is a checklist for you to have. This is again feedback that we got from our um, students. If you come to our training, we do plus and delta every day, which means that you you tell us what we did well and you tell us what we can improve. And I promise you that the next morning we go up in front of class and we tell you that thing that you asked us to improve how we could improve it. Okay, so I, I just got note that the checklist is not being displayed. Let me just go back there. Let me go to my screen share. Oh, I'm 
I'm having technical difficulties. Present to everyone. That's probably why my checklist is not being displayed. Let me know if you can see my checklist now. Doo, 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 doo. So screen share with project selection checklist, share. Can you guys see it? Perfect. I can see that you can see my project selection checklist. So I'm going to go from there. Um, so your, we start with, it has to be a problem or opportunity statement that is aligned with your organization's priorities. So it has to be something someone cares about. You can't just come up with a project and uh, say, oh, you know, I thought this would be cool to do, but have no real thought around, you know, why is this a pain? So that goes to the next statement. It has to address a pain to take advantage of a missed opportunity. So for example, um, so the first one, reducing administrative costs, that's an, that's an interesting one, but it has to be a little bit more specific than that. It has to address a pain, which means that um, it has to really, somebody has to care about it. At the end of the day, if you're going to select a project, make sure somebody cares <laughs> about eliminating that pain or realizing an opportunity that you're not taking advantage of. So for example, the company experienced a 54% increase in the number of flight changes from the previous year, which impacted the company's travel cost. So I'm still not clear what the problem is there, but maybe they wanted to reduce um, um, reduce the number of flight changes there, right? So that's probably related to that. The pain of our opportunity is something that can be measured. You have to be able to measure what you're trying to improve. You cannot improve what you cannot measure. Now, we've, we are called in time and time again for to do some employee engagement activities where we're trying to engage frontline staff and improve culture, improve morale. I will tell you there are tools out there to actually measure your culture and we actually implement those tools. So everything is measurable, whether it's morale, whether it's anything that you can think of, it's measurable. And we have a module in our training that covers exactly how you could make something measurable. So if you can't figure it out, don't sweat it. Just come to the training and we'll work with you on that project. So you don't have to have all these answers. I'm just getting you to think about these things. So by the time you come to the training, you have some idea of how you can measure it. Um, so it cannot contain a solution. So a lot of people come to us and they say, oh, we got this new software. We're going to make that my project. Or we got this new tool, new project management system. Oh, this new office I want to open. That's going to be my uh, my project. Uh, it doesn't fly like that. Uh, we, we really want you to solve a problem. We really want you to realize an opportunity. And it has to be addressing either one of those. It's not a solution. We're going to almost zap the solutioning out of you at the session because we're going to we're going to really make you focus on problem uh, defining your problem and identifying your problem really really well and it's helpful if you're excited by the notion of solving that problem so you really have to be excited about um, your you know that problem that you're trying to solve or the missed opportunity and i tell you that you have to be excited because um, leading projects requires persistence it's, it's, you know, especially if it doesn't come naturally to you, it requires persistence and having some uh, motivation and excitement for what you're doing will help you with that. We're actually going to teach you how to write an elevator pitch for your project as well within the first three days of the session. We used to have it in the last two days, but we're moving that curriculum to the first three days of that session. So in terms of uh, the people aspect of things, this is just defining your problem. You see how I spent a lot of time thinking about defining your problem? The, the, the course is going somewhere, somewhere like that as well. Um, who feels the pain of the problem or missed opportunity? So when we talk about flight changes, right, 
um, who's feeling the pain? Are we trying to reduce costs? So you might say, yeah, the organization is feeling the pain because there's added cost, but depends on the problem that you're looking at. So in the example with uh, reducing um, um, the prep time for the patients, the ultimate customer were the patients, right? And so they had an ambitious goal of reducing the whole, uh, all of the time by 15 minutes. But then when they did a test run, they realized, you know what, the patients actually like the extra time. So they only reduced the time by 10 minutes and they did a good job of it. So um, it's all about testing it out, but you really have to think about the people aspect of things. Again, you cannot problem solve without the people who do the work engaged in your project. So if you're bringing a project to the, to the session, you don't have to have it 100% ready, but you have to have a notion of who is involved in touching different parts of that problem or opportunity. So I'll just give you an example. If it's a payroll process, right, you think from the beginning to the end, it's sort of, you know, it's the employees that actually are submitting their time. It's the manager that's creating the schedule. It's the uh, payroll clerk that gets uh, that gets the next step in the process and processes it. It's the finance manager, right? All the way to maybe it's the CEO that signs off on it. Who knows, right? So everybody in that process is is related to it. And if you're trying to solve a problem in that process, you really do need to engage people at the front lines. And initially, it sounds quite overwhelming if you're not used to doing it, but soon it becomes habit. It's, it's a cultural change, right? And uh, do the people involved in the current state of the project agree with your interpretation of the problem or opportunity? I giggle as I talk about that because um, <laughs> You, everybody has to care and they have to agree <laughs> that it's a problem or an opportunity. And if they don't, you're not going to get engagement. Again, it goes back to my elevator pitch and it goes back to making sure we actually have data. So what is the effect of the pain? It's basically getting objective facts. So you have to, you know, you don't have to get the information before the session, but we're going to make you, when you leave the session, get this information. Think about where could you possibly get this information? What are the barriers that you might face in getting this information? Just think about those things because it's, it's important for you to prove that you're actually making an improvement. And then you have to talk about the magnitude of the problem or missed opportunity and in what time frame. So you can uh, estimate the cost savings that can be realized, estimate the time savings, estimate the quality improvement that can be realized and how. And towards the end, we have a few examples for you of good problem statements. And uh, we'll, this is an exercise. So if, if, you, if you're one of those people that like to prep a lot before coming to the training, I would recommend you do, do, you do this. And um, you will learn from everybody else in the classroom as well. We have some good examples of problem statements right there. See, uh, you know, some things that are similar is they have measurables in there. And um, what we're going to, when we transform your culture, we're transforming it to a culture of actually um, metrics-based culture. Everything is objective. Subjectivity really is is diminished, and um, there's there's a there's a different sense of peace and calm when it comes to when everything is all your decisions are made based on objective metrics. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to open up the chat room to see if anybody has any questions or comments or anything to add in, in regards to this checklist because that's really the what, what we want to make sure that you come to the training prepared with. Okay, I don't see any questions coming up. They're very quiet. All right, so I will continue on to the next slide, reviewing the checklist. So really, if you wanna find out if this training is for you, this is just a small little set of questions that I put out there. But 
are you a hands-on individual who executes projects? So are you actually going to execute a project when you're in, in the session, right? Like, like when you go back to your workplace, right? Um, if you are a person supporting other person and, and other people and executing projects, you can certainly attend the training. We have had, we have quite a few CEOs attend the training because they are more hands-on CEOs and execute the projects themselves. But also you might consider attending actually um, our critical to vision training. So I'll just, uh, I'll actually show you the webinar offer right now. It's a free webinar uh, that's gonna come up October 18th. Um, it's really helping you guys align uh, yourselves as senior leaders and it's only for senior leaders It's for CEOs and executives or managers who are in training to become the new executive director for an organization and it's there for you to um, yeah it's there for you to see that so I'm sharing the PowerPoint presentation I think can everybody see it All right, I'll continue on. So feel free to register for the free Critical Division webinar uh, if you are a senior executive. Um, are you excited about doing things differently or at least uh, learning about doing things a different way? So that's, um, you know, uh, we actually have some people that came to the session because they were told to come to the session because they weren't excited about doing things differently. And uh, we promise you by the end of the third day, you, 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 we convert you. The first part of the session has nothing to do with lean. It has everything to do with changing your paradigm. And a paradigm is just the way you look at the world. So we promise you that uh, when you come to the session, the first thing we do is we help you shift your perspective. We have quite a few doers that have come to our session going, oh, I can just do it. Why would I do all this documentation? I'm just gonna do the work. And um, it really isn't about that. It's about really taking the time to define your problem as best as you can so you fix the right root cause. Are you a frontline staff? Uh, are you a frontline staff who can, um, who's interested in having a greater role in your workplace? So that's another part of it. All right. Um, so you could, I would say I'm just distracted because I'm some people are telling me about people setting notes and I'm looking at the chat at the same time. So I apologize if I sound distracted. That's because I am. Um, yes. So if you're a frontline staff, you know things can be done a better way. Absolutely, this training is for you. Do you see the need for improvement, but just don't know where to begin? This is training is for you because it really gives you a very very structured way of going through and uh, making the training possible. So if you are an executive, you can register for our Critical to Vision webinar. Uh, if you think it's for you, we do have we like a little offer right now. I think it expires in like 48 hours or something like that. So save that link. Just It won't register you if you click register now. Just save that link. Uh, you'll get $300 off the regular price. And I think there's only four available or how many ever we sell before October 7th. So just save the link. It's only valid for two business days. So I'll leave that there. And it's really only for executives. So the we would, we would be verifying you before we actually register you in that particular session. So how can you convince your team? Let me see if we have a, uh, a letter. We don't have that. So I will send, I will promise to send you a, a link to the business case letter um, to help you convince your team. But also I will put up the offer again to register for your case study webinar, which is the free webinar. And if, if they're not convinced by then, then it probably isn't for them. That's, <laughs> you know, cause it's not for everybody. And, uh, we always say like our clients are some of the most um, innovative clients who are looking to do things differently. So that's who we work with. And uh, you know, not everybody's ready to be at that point in their lives and uh, go from there. They're not all modern. They're not, uh, they're not super um, 
ahead of the curve right now, but they're interested in being ahead of the curve. That's that's who our typical client is, is that interest, that need for improvement from where you are today. And uh, that's where we're at. We promised uh, to do only one hour of the presentation. We uh, we got through it. De uh, Derek and I didn't tear each other's hair out, so that was <laughs> that was that was a good thing. So um, I'm going to uh, just maybe we can share. Our, uh, I'm going to stop the presentation. I'm going to stop the screen sharing, and I'll share our camera so you can see Derek Polano and myself. And if you have uh, any questions. Let us know. Okay, so is the Critical Division webinar open to public or to share with other executives? Yes, the Critical Division webinar is open to the public. So I will uh, certainly. I want to go to the. I'm going to load up the offer again of the C2B webinar. Load display. Yes, absolutely. That is open to the public. It's free. Uh, when you come to the webinar, if you're if you're still like, oh, am I an executive? Am I eligible? All that stuff. Come to the webinar, and we'll we'll uh, have a conversation about that. So, at that webinar, it's not going to be um, Derek and I. It's going to be Norm Rudd and possibly myself. I'm not sure. Actually, no, I'm in Toronto that day. So it's going to be Norm Rudd that's going to be leading that webinar for us. He's our senior strategy consultant. Um, I don't have any more questions coming up, which is a good thing, I think. No, never a good thing. No? This, <laughs> this is your chance, guys. If you have anything else you want to know, um, if you're actually taking the training and you have any other questions, this would be a great time. Um, if you'd like to take the training and have any more questions about uh, when or uh, anything like that, uh, please feel free, to, feel free to ask us now. Yeah, and, and know that you don't have to get too prepared before the training. There's not a lot of preparation, but if you are the kind of person that likes to be prepared, we thought we'd give you the checklist. It's, uh, it's optional. It's not something that you absolutely have to do uh, to go through that. So that's pretty much where we're at, right? We're just going to hang around for another. Uh, we'll give it a couple more minutes, and if we don't see anything, then we will. Uh, we'll we will sign off. Sign off from here. In the meantime, I'll. Uh, what is it? Different levels of lean. Ah, oh, I had I had asked for a slide on the different levels of lean. So they are. Um, there, there's an acronym there, and I'm not sure what it means. And somebody says, smile, Derek. <laughs> <laughs> so the different levels of lean um, are the white belt, the yellow belt, the green belt, the brown belt, and the black belt. So um, you don't have to have taken the white belt or the yellow belts training to come to our green belt session. Really good question, though, because we, we meant to put a slide in there for it, and we, we just didn't get around to it. And um, the uh, the the white belt training, we what we do, we don't just do a gen. We do some general white belts just for um, knowledge building. But when we come to your organization to do a white belt, so if you're a green belt in an organization, we help you activate that frontline layer, and that's what we do the white belt training for. We actually um, train the frontline staff into how to implement lean and it's often related to something you already have so it's often related to a problem solving huddle board or uh, some kind of metrics you're looking to implement so it's related to a process so we actually don't just do a general white belt um, teach them how to identify waste and, and take off we actually contextualize it for you for the white belt you don't have to have white or yellow belts uh, before coming to uh, to our green belts training we belt in a while because the feedback from the yellow belt session honestly was it was just a lot of uh, theory <laughs> it was quite boring <laughs> well yeah really without the uh, project component and that was one of the big differences from yellow to green um, is that working on a project that you do in the green belt so um, that hands-on learning really makes it a lot more um, 
uh, more contextualized. It, it helps you actually implement the tools. So the, the yellow belt was very theoretical, and without that hands-on working on a project, um, you know, it just people weren't getting enough out of it. I think so. Our focus has really been on the uh, on the green belt and, and having people work on projects themselves. So uh, I have another one. That says awesome webinar. Thank you very much. <laughs> and um, I I'm not going to repeat the acronym L because I don't know what it means. So if you want to spell out the acronym for me, maybe I will repeat it. Oh, it says. Bye bye for now. That's good. I think on that note, we can probably end our presentation. Um, hopefully, uh, actually, we could do one last poll if you guys are still around. Is uh, or we can do like, how would you rate our webinar? Oh, there we go. There we go. Oh, we didn't we didn't share the results, but I promise you, if if you said boring, I will I will I will share that with you. We didn't get a grade. Oh, we got 50% grade, 50% good. No borings yet. No okays yet. It's anonymous too, just so you know. It's anonymous. So we don't know that you're voting. We don't know who said what. So feel free to click on the boring part if you want. We try to keep it as interesting as we could. But All right. So we have a 60% Good and uh, a forty percent great. So we're we're gonna we're gonna aspire to be great the next time around. Oh, we we're now at sixty seven percent good and thirty three percent great. So we have lots of work to do, we but go. we're we, we're looking forward to doing the work. And um, we will send you out that um, what did I promise them? The business case letter. Business case. So if yep. you're looking to if you're looking to um, actually. S s create a business case for why this training is necessary, we actually have a letter that uh, speaks to that. So it helps you uh, sell that in your organization. And uh, I think that's pretty much, that's that's that for now. Thank you very much for attending. This, this webinar will be available as a video on YouTube as soon as the webinar ends. So if there was someone that you wanted to share this webinar with and uh, they weren't able to attend, you certainly can um, share the YouTube video link and um, it'll it'll be available for them. So I think that's it from me. Is there anything from you? No, nothing else uh, from me other than hope to see you all at the training. Awesome. Thank you Take very much. Take care. Have a good one, everybody. Bye-bye.